Are you about to pay too much tax when you submit your property tax return? Well, check out this video as I help you avoid those costly mistakes. Hi there, my name is Simon Mishevich from Optimize Accountants. I'm here to help you grow your wealth whilst reducing your tax liability. And in this video, we are going to be talking about 18 avoidable mistakes that could be made on your tax return. How much more tax will you pay as a direct result of the mistakes that are made on your tax return caused by you or indeed by your accountant without you even knowing? So this video is great to help you understand what you can claim, what mistakes be made by others, because we've got countless examples of that, and how you can then save tax in the future. Now let's talk about the property tax issues that you have. Now, the first thing I would say is this is going to go in order of the tax return, but there are mistakes even at the front end. The fact that you could have property between husband, wife, civil partners, and you've got the property income 50-50 split, even though one person is a basic rate taxpayer, one's a high rate taxpayer. All of a sudden, you're paying far more tax straight away. So you've not even had that starting point in the correct fashion. You need to make sure that you speak to your tax specialist, your accountant, to look at ways that you can apportion income in the most effective way. I'm going to use my um, laser pointer for the rest of this presentation to make it easier. Uh, we talk about income now. Um, there are different ways of using your tax returns in terms of how you populate that information. There's the accruals basis and cash basis. Make sure you speak to your accountant about that if you're not sure what the differences are. But ultimately, cash basis is much more effective if you are doing tax return. Why? Well, there may be times when your tenant has not paid you in the tax year. You may be expecting 12 payments, but you've only received 10 or 11. As a result of that, you'll pay less tax because you've got less income using the cash basis. What else do we have? Property income allowance. Now, did you know that if you don't earn more than a thousand pounds, then you don't have to pay tax on that property income. So as long as the gross income is less than a thousand pounds in a given year, you do not need to pay any tax at all. And yet people, it's right there on your tax return. And yet people just circumnavigate it because the rushing, oh, let me guess, the 30th of January or the 31st of January. So they don't have time to read these notes, which is clearly said, read the notes. And they pay tax on their property income, even though they don't need to. What a crazy way to handle your tax affairs. Um, the other side to it is if you're using accountants that are generic in nature, they are not property tax specialists. They'll read the tax law and it will say, right, if you are doing certain repairs, it will be capital. But they need to read the property pages to also understand whether they are legitimately uh, a capital item or should be put as a replacement item, which is offset against your income, which means you get a tax allowance. But some accountants don't do that. They just look at the BIM rather than the PIM. BIM, PIM. Uh, what's the difference? Well, that's just the HMR legislation. Okay, so go ahead and read that. But ultimately, if you are not claiming for legitimate uh, items, then again, you will be paying more tax. I have seen examples, interesting enough, whereby a client, uh, we did a review of the previous tax return, and they said about these repairs, they was expecting £20,000 in repairs. And when we looked at their repairs line in their tax return, it was something like one, two thousand pounds, which is significantly less than ten thousand pounds. I'm sure you can appreciate. And what had happened is that their accountant stripped out eight thousand pounds worth of costs because they said the double glazed windows was an upgrade because it's going from single glazing to double glazing. Well, in actual fact, that's still a replacement in the eyes of HMRC, never mind anyone else. So that cost should be allowed. Now, the fact that the client in question did not challenge the accountant and allowed these costs to be stripped out, which, by the way, if they stripped it out of this, that also means that they won't claim that cost against the capital gains tax liability. 
So that could be number 19 as a tax mistake going on there. So do make sure that you, you are aware of the three R's, which is the repair, replace, renew. If you can categorize any of those costs, then you can get the tax relief, but many people don't. Not keeping receipts. If you do not have a receipt for the expenditure by some sort of uh, tradesperson who says, well, pay me in cash, I'll give you a discount. But you might be losing the tax relief on that. So they might save you, you know, £100, £200. But then all of a sudden, because you don't have the receipt, you are now in a position whereby you could pay £500 worth of tax. Oh, why? You're not doing yourself any favor. Make sure you get a receipt from that tradesperson. Make sure that the description of that invoice doesn't just say property refurb. Because if you are investigated, then ultimately the HMRC could easily say, well, that just says refurb. That's capital. Now you have to prove yourself innocence, right? You are guilty. Did you know that? Before you are proven innocent. It's not the usual way around for law, but it is for tax purposes. So make sure you do yourself a favor, get that receipt. Make sure the receipt is descriptive enough to say that it's a replacement bathroom, replacement kitchen, not a new kitchen, okay? Because it's telling, the wordage of that invoice will tell HMRC if they can charge you more tax. A loan interest and finance costs. So we know that section 24, mortgage interest relief cap tells us that we can only offset the allowable cost. Now, we talk about the 2021 tax return. Ultimately, you're in a position whereby your amount of money that you can claim or get mortgage interest is zero. So ultimately, you've got to look at this uh, loan other finance costs. But what people don't do is that they think that uh, Section 24, especially accountants, right, they don't ask you what your properties are. So they just say, oh, okay, property portfolio, bang, bang, bang. Okay, so it's all residential, right? They don't ask you, they just tell you, they just assume it. Now you could have a mixture of furnished holiday lets in there, you could have residential properties, you could have commercial properties, and the accountant in question could easily just go, well, no mortgage interest allowed. They'll blank it. And therefore you will pay more tax as a direct result of you not claiming those legitimate costs against your income. Don't forget, Section 24, Mortgage Interest Relief Cap, only affects residential property. If you have furnished holiday lets, commercial property lets, ultimately, you can claim all of the mortgage interest costs, but accountants who are generic just do not look at their tax returns. We only hire fully qualified accountants to do our tax returns. Who do you think is submitting your tax returns for you? Is it a qualified accountant? I doubt it. Especially when you're only paying 100, 200 pounds for a tax return. They're not gonna spend that much time on it. And therefore you might be saving pennies, but paying in pounds for the amount of tax that you're paying. I'm hoping that I'm coming across rather strongly. Um, all right, so let's think about something else here. Uh, other capital houses. Did you know if you have a furnished holiday let, you could claim capital ounces. Now I've done a video on that, so it's worth checking out our videos on capital ounces. But ultimately, you could claim capital ounces on financial little lets, which is an extra cost. That extra cost will help you reduce your tax liability, but people don't do it. Equally, because of this COVID-19 coronavirus, everyone's working from home. Well, right now I'm on a desk. I have furniture that I'm sitting on and I'm putting things on rather messily, if you don't mind me saying. Um, but ultimately, those items, I can claim capital houses against my property business because it's there for me to run my property business or to run my other associated businesses. So why am I not claiming those costs? Because I didn't think of it, right? So ultimately, you need to make sure that you're claiming it. No cost, no tax relief. Cost from placing uh, domestic items, again, a section of property tax return that I see people do not claim for. Now, you might have bought a property, and let's imagine you buy a property from a, a couple. Now, they're downgrading for one reason or another, or they're going to a residential care home. Now, they might choose to leave the furniture in there because they said, well, would you mind getting rid of it for us? Or actually, would you like this furniture? And you say, yeah, yeah, sure, fine. You're being nice, you're gonna skip it anyway. But did you know that you could claim 
for those items if you do indeed replace it with new furniture, especially if you're doing professional lets or student lets as for a HMO. Not only that, which is another mistake that people don't think about when they're buying a property, they just look at the purchase cost of the property and say, right, okay, that's it. Do my SDLT return. And their solicitor won't bat an eyelid because again, they're transactionally focused. They're not worried about how much stamp duty land tax. They're just going to use the generic HMRC SDLT tax calculator, which often produces the wrong results. So most time out of 10, I rather suspect that people are overpaying SDLT and well, I'll leave it there. So solicitors do need some support from you if you are buying a property that has furniture in it because you those, those furniture items is called chattels and you do not pay stamp duty land tax on chattels. You only pay stamp duty land tax on the bricks and mortar value. So have you overpaid stamp duty land tax? Well, I would for suspect, yes. And we've got other allowable property expenses. This field is in your tax return, but again, people are not claiming for travel costs when they go to see a letting agent, whether they go to see a state agent, whether they go to a network event, education event for the business, for the property business. You can claim these costs. If you are traveling out and you are out for a good period of the day, to look at properties, to see tenants and letting agents. Again, you can claim a value against the food you eat during the day. Use of home, furniture costs, and I put home furniture costs. What I mean by that is office home furniture, not the kind of furniture you have. Oh, can I claim my 72 inch screen TV? The answer would be no, I'm afraid no, uh, okay. But the furniture that you use in your home for business purposes, you can indeed claim that. So again, no cost claim equals more tax. And then we've got residential finance costs not included in box 26. Again, people do not understand some of these numbers. So as a result, they don't fill it in or they put in the wrong number. And what you need to be doing on here is if you've got residential property, Going forwards, you will need to put the full value of your mortgage interest costs in this box. Now, if you don't do that, you do not get the 20% tax relief. Now, I do a lot of tax consultations, and it's amazing when people say, but I didn't think I could get tax relief on the mortgage interest. What does that suppose? That presupposes that people are submitting their tax return, not completing this box, which means that maybe if they're getting £10,000 worth of mortgage interest costs, are they putting that £10,000 in this box, which means they can get, even you know, as a high rate taxpayer, you still only get 20% tax relief, but that's still £2,000 worth of tax that you have overpaid because you've not put in that number. Crazy. Um, so just be careful with all these mistakes, which is costing people thousands upon thousands. And losses brought forward. Again, people, I've seen tax returns that they've uh, done it one tax year, year one, let's say, they've got a loss of 2,500, which they could legitimately carry forward. And this is including the finance cost losses as well, by the way. And they put the new tax return in, and then they come to us and say, well, there's my, my second year tax return. Uh, can you use that for the third year, which we then look after. And we look back and we say, well, you've got no losses. No, no, I've got losses, definitely. No, I've definitely got losses. It's not on your tax return. And therefore, those losses would not help reduce their in-year profits, which means no losses equals more tax. Can you see where I'm going from this? There are, like I say, there are 18 mistakes. I haven't even been trying to find the mistakes. This is just based on uh, recent evidence and recent discussions I've had with my tax team to understand what problems they're facing. So how many more mistakes are there? Now, if you want to book a, a call to discuss our services, there's a link appearing above my head right now and below this video. Equally, don't forget that you can book a tax consultation to find out how we can help you reduce your tax liability. Use the code YouTube25 to get your 25% discount. Again, a link is above my head, and you've guessed it below this video as well. Um, so, are you doing your tax return right now? How easy is it? How difficult is it? 
How confused are you? Let's have a chat about that and drop a comment below this video. Don't forget to press like if you've enjoyed this video, if it's given you some ideas, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel so I can notify you every time there's a new video that I release. Until next time, my name is Simon Mashevich from Artsmise Accountants. I'll see you again soon.